What will you do if you hear this alarm while you are in the library? How would you escape from the library if there is an emergency? Knowing the answers to these questions could keep you safe. So today, I am going to share with you IMU Library Procedures during emergency. The purpose of this video is to provide guidance and information to effectively manage emergency preparedness and respond in IMD Library. This is an effort to prevent and minimize injury, loss of life, damage to property, and recover normal operating hours. So, what situation is considered an emergency? An emergency is one which has any of the following characteristics. First, Potential to cause injury or loss of life. Second, potential to cause damage and or loss of property. Third, potential to cause pollution to the environment. And the last one, potential to cause disruption inside and or outside the premises. There are four emergency color codes based on identified critical incidents that all personnel need to be aware of. First, Code red is when there is an event of raging fire or heavy smoke. Second, code brown is when there is a failure or threat of failure to essential services or mass casualty, for example, building or structure collapse. Third, code purple is when there is a boom threat. And the last one, code black is when there is a personal or workplace threat of violence to other or self. For example, in the event of active shooter or a mob. Each incident based on these color codes may require a different type of response. Okay, for example, in the event of fire, if it is a small fire, you can use fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire only if you are trained. However, for raging fire or heavy smoke, normally there will be an alarm bells and an alert announcement through public address system which is PA system for evacuation. Let us delve into how we should win in the event where we need to evacuate the library. Before this event occurs, I would like to remind all staff and students in the library are responsible for their own safety and need to take these following measures. Okay, first, review the evacuation plan posted on each level or floor. Second, identify the most quick emergency escape route as this will be the primary escape route. Third, identify a secondary route in case the primary route is inaccessible. And lastly, Familiar with the assembly point identified for evacuees during emergency evacuation. Here is the library Bukit Jalil floor plan for you to review the escape route. When the fire alarm sounds for not less than 1 minute before it is muted or code yet had been declared, everyone in the library needs to first remain calm, second, listen to PA announcement if necessary, third, log all available documents, fourth, have your house keys, wallet, handheld devices ready in case building is evacuated for a long period of time, fifth, Listen to instruction from your floor warden. 6. Evacuate the floor using the near fire exit staircase. 7. Do not panic or run. 8. Do not use the lift. And the last one, proceed to assembly point. A structural collapse is an example of a code brown event. If you are in a building that experiences a collapse or severe damage, or witness such an event anywhere on a premises, 
contact the floor warden or FMA or safety and health officer immediately. If you are outside the building, do not attempt to enter the building. If you are inside the building, evacuate from the building. Exit via staircase only. Do not attempt to use elevators. Exit quickly and calmly and do not attempt to take anything with you except for personal belongings. If the damage prevents you from exiting the building, go to an undamaged room if possible and open or break a window and signal for help. If you are trapped in the building, attempt if possible to call the emergency response teams or FMA or safety and health officer via a handphone so that the emergency services can be alerted to your location. Once you are outside and at a safe distance from the building, do not leave the area until instructed to do so. Bomb crack or bomb explosion is categorized as code purple event. A bomb threat may be received by any of the following ways. As a suspicious package through the mail, by written message delivered through the mail or by messenger, or by telephone or other telecommunication equipment. Although a bomb threat may be a harm, it must be treated and dealt with seriously. A recipient of a bomb threat call should number one, keep the caller on the line long enough to obtain further information such as a location of the bomb, type of device, what it is looks like, and the expected time of explosion. Number two, alert a colleague to notify about the bomb threat immediately to senior management representative or incident commander or incident controller or safety and health officer or FMA or your head of department or emergency response teams. Number three, record the conversation in writing or by voice or video recorder. The exact words of the caller. For more information, on how to ask the question to the thread, all staff and students may refer to Bomb Thread Response Procedure in Staff or Student Portal. In the event of code blood, what should you do if you see a suspicious or dangerous activity in library? 1. If you observe a suspicious or dangerous activity, immediately contact the security guard, extension 3333 or FMA office. Always keep your location and nature of the activity and be prepared to respond to instruction. 2. The observer is to remain at the scene if safe until relief. 3. Preserve the scene of the incident. If possible, where necessary, post a security guard. 4. Send for the first aid team if injuries are involved. I'm sure you're wondering, what do I do? If I see someone near me has sustained an injury caused by a slip, fall, or any other kind of accident in a library, no worries, I will guide you through the IMU Medical Emergency Protocol. If it is during office hours, you need to notify the floor warden or first aid team member immediately if the injury only requires minor first aid treatment, such as minor scratches, cuts, burns, and splinters. You may need to be assisted by the first aid team member. If the injury requires treatment other than minor first aid, you need to check the patient's responsiveness. If the patient responds to you, obtain his or her name and other details and immediately contact IMU Medical Clinic. However, if the patient is non-responsive, directly contact IMU Medical Clinic and wait for the patient until help arrives. After office hours, during weekends and public holidays, you can report to the guard post at SP Parking, our main entrance for emergency contact. While waiting for assistance, 
assess patient's condition for severity of injury. If it is a major injury such as unconsciousness, major bleeding, or breathlessness, call for ambulance and IMU security guard. Kindly wait by the patient until help arrives. As for minor injuries such as minor cuts, vibrations, or lacerations, you may obtain the first aid kit at the library counter. Alright, that is the library procedure during emergency. May you have an insight and be familiar with the information. Hope this short video will be beneficial to you.